We shall join with our second panel discussion on the topic, Power of Tech and Gen AI, Building a Resilient Backbone. I am pleased to invite on dais the panel of speakers, Mr. Sanjay V. Mudliya, ED Bank of Baroda, Mr. Kiran Shetty, CEO and Regional Head, Swift India, Mr. E. Ratan Kumar, GM Central Bank of India, Mr. Pankar Chattar, CEO and IT, Mr. Pinaki Haldar, CIO Bandhan Bank, and our moderator for this session is Mr. Ashish Garg, MD and Senior Partner BCG. Over to you, sir. Yep, thank you. Right, all set, sir? All right, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's really a privilege to moderate this uh, panel on one of the most important topics of our times, uh, probably also of all the boardrooms in banks, NBFCs, the entire financial services sector. Our guests come from most impressive public sector banks, private sector banks, but also come from industry where they are greasing the industry. Some of them also have a, a vantage point which is beyond just the financial services. So I think this panel, I'm hoping, will provide a lot of insights to, to the audience. Uh, my, this is, I, I really like this this kind of a setup. It's a very nice, intimate kind of a setup. So we'll keep it very, uh, we'll, we'll keep it uh, very dialogue based. And uh, actually, I'm going to ask for audience questions as we go along. Uh, it's not going to be just at the end. And so keep your questions ready for, for our esteemed panelists. But let me make some observations. And let me make some observations uh, from where the last uh, panel kind of dropped off which is on DPDP Act. Like DPDP Act is actually, it's a, it's a very nice YouTube available by the author of the, by the DPDP Act. It's actually a very philosophical act. Unlike the other acts, it does not prescribe should and shouldn'ts. It speaks about the philosophy of keeping the customer first and then protecting the customer interest. Actually, that's a very profound change because the responsibility are all with the data holder. In fact, you have to also delete the data at some point of time with the same ease. Uh, I wonder if we really have that kind of infrastructure processes to be able to deal with, with those kind of new inputs. India is a poster child when it comes to the front-end technology. I mean, of course, UPI, we look at G20, every foreign dignitary who comes in kind of speaks about the progress that has been made. But however, if you just look at uh, you know, any last two, three years, the number of regulatory orders or directions on the technology side will suggest it's a wake up call let's let's get something going uh, you know in in our in our back end maybe a massive investment in technology is required every bank leader speaks about making their bank technology first bank which is great uh, but every banker also has a challenge of getting the talent getting their organization structure right right and and if it is if financial services is such a technology uh, attractive segment, then why do we really struggle to get uh, some of these capabilities on board? So we'll explore this plethora of conversations today in the next one hour. But let me put the big one on the table and let me uh, invite uh, audience to speak about, or at least give me a show of hands, which is the Gen AI. So let me start about Gen AI, and I have two questions for the audience. I have three options for this question. And based on your question, I'm going to lead some of those pointers back to the panelist. So for the audience, what do you think about Gen AI? And I have three options. One is, you don't care. Two is, it will change the world. Third is, it is like a fad. It's on a high. Maybe it'll settle down somewhere. So first one, raise of hands. You don't care. Oh, everyone cares about it. OK, what do you think? Will it change the world? All right, we have almost like 60% people raising their hands. And it's a fad like others has a peak, but will settle down a little bit more evenly. We have about 30, 40%. So most people think it will change the world. So panelists, be ready. A lot of Gen AI questions coming your way. 
How valuable is Gen AI for financial services world? Three options again. One, it's a do or die scenario. Not sure we should be the first ones to take the bold moves here. It'll be useful in niche areas. Do, I do or die scenario, raise your hands. Okay, a few only. Useful in select niche areas. Quite a few, so Gen AI important, but in select areas, and not sure if it is helpful, probably, I think that question we can skip. Wonderful, I think that gives us a fantastic start to this session, and we will cover Gen AI a lot in detail, but let me start with Sanjay ji, you first. I think Bank of Baroda is known for innovation uh, for the last many years, like many other, many other banks, and I think you've made significant advances on front and digitization. I am a customer, I experience that. Uh, but if I just look around the FIs, you know, it feels like a lot needs to be done on the underlying. Uh, it also, I'm not speaking about Bank of Baroda, but largely it is also seen, you know, you read newspaper report, you feel a lot of interventions and orders coming in. How are you thinking about reinventing your core, your legacy? Uh, thank you, Ashish, and good morning to all of you. Uh, a very loaded question because uh, it has got a lot of things which uh, can be talked about. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, last few years, uh, because of the digital uh, 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 things which have been changing and adoption which is taking across the, the country, there are a lot of uh, changes have happened on the front end side. A lot of new applications have come, a lot of new processes have been defined, a lot of new user experience part has been looked at uh, by, by various entities. However, the, the back end, which is, which is the, the core, uh, the, it is not that thing, it has not been modernized over a period of time. There are a lot of activities which has happened, a lot of initiatives have been taken. But if you ask, the, the fundamental question is, uh, the, the core was not ready for these kind of a numbers or these kind of a changes happening so very, very quickly. So as a result of that thing, the core requires a major change as far as the, the way it has been architected, the way the scalability uh, is required for the new, inf new uh, age uh, uh, initiatives. The third thing is, which is again uh, a more uh, important aspect which is coming up is related to the security. So I will put it around the three major areas where we have to look at the core part. One is on the scalability side. That is on-demand scalability I'm talking about. Second point, which is important on that thing is the resilience. When you are increasing and increasing the load uh, with, uh, with multiple X, not a percentage increase, obviously there is going to be a challenge on the resilience piece and uh, the thought uh, kind of a thinking on that. And the third important aspect is on the security aspect. So these are the three things are there. Now this is a problem statement or this is something which we are grappling with. Now what is being done? There are a lot of initiatives which have been taken by various entities. Uh, few of them are uh, related to the hollowing of the core. Hollowing of the core is a, is a kind of a, uh, a statement which has been given, but basically it means that large uh, and, uh, kind of a work or the processes are taken out from the core system and it has been put into a parallel system. That's one approach which has been adopted or the people are thinking about it. Looking into, into the changing scenario, people are also modernizing their architecture by having uh, a, a kind of a containerized environment or, or uh, uh, microservices based applications or the systems being developed. So these are some of the, the techniques or the, the, the concepts have been used to ensure that the core also gets modernized. So it is definitely a call which, is, uh, which almost all the banks or all the financial entities are uh, looking at it. Uh, there are few still challenges are there, like the, the basic core banking application per se, we do not have any solution available which is, which is working with the new architecture. So that's something which uh, banks are, are looking as an option, uh, what can be done. So the, the one of the option, as I was telling it to you, to take out some of the services into a separate uh, application and work on that line. So these are some things are there, uh, but uh, yes, there is a lot of discussion which is happening and a lot of activities are also happening on this. Thank you. This is fantastic. I think you have, uh, Sanjay, you have given us some very good pointers, and we'll come back to you on resilience. You spoke something. You spoke about hollowing the core. Maybe we can speak about multiple cores. So there are a bunch of things you have spoken about, including microservices. Pinake, I'll come to you from a private sector lens. Uh, you know, all this is fine, but you know, the problem in technology conversations is very quickly it gets into jargon which very few of us understand, or probably don't want to understand. Let's say, uh, if I look at very simple matrix, 
globally, if you were to think about it, we will say banks spend X percentage of their revenues on IT. And Indian banks spend, let's say, 2 percentage lower than that. But that may not be the right metric because, you know, uh, we have a very different environment in India. So let me pose a question to you in the manner that if your board was to ask you, are you investing enough in your technology and for future, how would you approach that question? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And thanks, Piki and IBA, RBI, IBA to, for inviting me. OK. See, actually, your uh, question is, uh, let us come to the question. Uh, see, actually, what is happening, the spend and everything, whatever IT spend will happen, everything depends on the business strategy. OK, whatever business wants to drive, accordingly, IT strategy, IT spend, everything will be driven by that. OK, always it happens. If it will change that path, obviously it will not be successful. So that is the first and foremost thing, how business is driving, what is our business risk appetite, what business wants to do, accordingly everything is spent and everything is to be driven on that only. Okay. So normally that spent, whatever is in I think that uh, most of the organization, whatever the, uh, the, the spent, uh, maybe for the uh, um, uh, overseas branches, whatever they are doing, and our Indian banks, Maybe that maybe some different will be there, but spending and other things is significantly is happening. That is not a problem. But how we are doing the spend, that is the most important thing. Right. What it actually we are driving the business ROI, and that that is also only have to decide. Okay. Now think that there are different area we need to spend. Like the one is that the run the bank. Okay. Then grow the bank. Different different area. Like the one point is what I am saying that run the bank with the legacy system, whatever is there. That also, that is actually, I, I, would, I would consider that is the heart of the person, okay? It's like a heart of the person that how we have to define that. The legacy system, that also you have to maintain and protect likewise, okay? We, we should not uh, put burden on that. That is the way first we have to do. But in, apart from that, the digitization, everything, also this peripheral application you have to create, and their spending will be there. So then always the spend has to be significant. We have to see how both the things, whether run the bank and grow the bank, and that we have to accordingly have to decide. So now, as I told this, uh, the legacy system, what I think he was talking about that, there, the innovation, whatever is happening, and there, how we have to doing, actually practically, we have to do that, how the system, uptime, and everything like heart, we have to keep that, it is, we have to keep the uptime. Okay, that is the primary object, okay, objective. So that is the way we have to do that, that the uptime have to maintain. And this, then that's why that what is happening that we are following the code, the point what you are stuck to say. That everything we are trying to be as, uh, as, as most burdenless and everything, that is the thing we are trying to do. And parallelly, a peripheral system, what we are doing that, the digitization, everything, the invent of JNI and everything, we have to invest on that. So that the customer and everything is a competitive edge. We can get the competitive edge, and apart from other reasons, and customer gets satisfaction happen. Customer is the first king. How the invest and in everything, how and drive the ROI and customer, their customer uh, satisfaction, that is the primary thing. And that way, the, our investment should be driven that. OK, clearly a very tough job. <laughs> you know, run the bank, think about customers, make sure the new elements are coming in. Uh, Kiran, let me move to you. You, you run uh, services which have to be almost like 100% time or whatever, 99 point X number of nines up all the time. The entire world trade kind of depends on your systems. You are continuously innovating. Your customers are continuously innovating. Uh, new, new changes are coming up. Tell us how you think about modernizing IT systems at Swift. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Ashish. Uh, good morning to all of you. I will start by thanking Mehta Saab and the IBA team, the FIKI team, for organizing such a fabulous uh, conference. It's really a privilege uh, for us to be here. Uh, so to your point, Ashish, uh, uh, you know, I think we have a big responsibility. Uh, we are set up as a cooperative, uh, which means that we are not for a profit uh, uh, motive company. Whatever we earn is, is given back to the community. So the onus on us is to continuously help uh, banks evolve. So one of the things that we are trying to do is standardized communication protocol across banking universe. Uh, if I were to put, the, put it in a very simple example, uh, you know, historically, if you bought a phone, you had a different charger. 
and you ended up having multiple different chargers at home, and if you were traveling, you'd struggle plugging it into a different geography and, and all of that, right? So by bringing in ISO 20022, our timeline uh, to get that ready for the entire globe across 212 countries and territories is November of 20, uh, 2026. So what that will enable is that you would be freely able to transform data and even an underdeveloped economy or a developed economy would be able to consume it, right? The other advantage is, uh, point number one is that it's an it's a open standard. The other advantage with this is that in an event that we see today, where countries are evolving into different payment ecosystems, they can still talk to each other. So, so that's really what we are trying to drive from our perspective, uh, Ashish. But I'll probably want to comment on uh, what uh, question you posed to Pinaki Saab. I think uh, if you look at India today, uh, we, are, we are very privileged to be in a time and era where economy is moving at a very fast pace. So today, our economy is at about $3.7 trillion, uh, right? And I was just uh, looking at the S&P global data. By 2030, we would be a $7 billion economy. Uh, would we double our investment by 2030 in the IT uh, segment? My answer is no. I think there will be much more smarter approaches uh, that will come into play in that. And the success will lie on how you are able to adapt such technologies, blend them with your uh, uh, legacy systems, evolve them. Uh, to me, I think that's a very, very important conversation on the table. Excellent. Thank you, Karan, for bringing that up. I think, sir, it has given a very good point about standardization, which can bring the costs down and create efficiency for the industry without killing innovation. So I think we need to keep that balance. Maybe the, the industry can think about it. And seven trillion is a pass and now. We talk about 30 trillion in Vixit Bharat. So, so maybe that's the number we move to. Let's come to Gen AI, which was, uh, which was uh, you know, which is the key theme of this uh, this panel. Let me start with you, uh, Pankaj. We just saw raise of hands, and it yes. seems like the audience is very enthusiastic about Gen AI and Gen AI in banking. Uh, you can look at banks a little bit from outside. So give us your perspective, not just from banking perspective, but overall. Sure. How do you think Gen AI really changing our world? Sure. In fact, I was a little surprised that hardly anybody thought it was a do or die situation, right? I would have expected a few more people to think that it is a do or die situation. So, uh, so Jenny has been talked about now almost for the last two years, right? Uh, Gartner has this thing called the hype cycle, and according to that, Jenny is over the hype cycle now, and we are entering uh, what is called the trough, where uh, people start getting disappointed that uh, there was so much conversation, but nothing actually came of it. Right. Having said which, different organizations are adopting it uh, at different pace. Right. So when I talk to IT companies, I see almost every data architect, solution architect adopting Gen AI in the way they drive their solutions. When I talk to IT departments of non-IT companies, including banks, there is a certain level of adoption of Gen AI over there. There's a comfort uh, with how they can use it. And then when I talk to business functions, there is a very different approach to Gen AI, right? So typically, uh, I would say the, the departments where you can use it, right? So there is customer service, there is marketing, product development, software, right? These are usually, and then there is management, leadership, etc., right? And there are different use cases for almost each of these areas. And the way an organization should or can approach it is very much dependent on their own appetite and their ability with data, right? So at a minimum, I would encourage every organization to use Gen AI for personal productivity, right? Every leader in this room and anywhere else should be using the uh, tools like ChatGPT or Gemini for improving their personal productivity, right? So, and let me give an example of this. It could be as simple as the speed with which you can convert a first thought to a final draft. Right? Whether it's an email you're writing, a board presentation you're making, any of that. Right? So there, this, just the speed at which you're able to execute tasks is much faster when you use a smart tool. But on the other end of the spectrum is how your data is organized. So let me give you an example. Right? Uh, I was uh, listening to some 
senior VP of Verizon speaking. So when a customer calls a customer service agent at Verizon, they have 1,800 data points related to that customer which is available. Now, a human being will struggle to make sense of those 1,800 data points. But a Gen AI tool can quickly run through all of that and give the customer service agent the most relevant thing that they should connect with the customer on. Right? So the Gen AI thing will tell you that, hey, this guy's area has an outage. And they had a similar outage three months ago. And he's probably an irate customer. And this is what you need to do. Versus this guy's just recently moved his address. And this is probably why he's calling you. So that the speed with which you are able to reach the root cause of why the customer is called and resolve it for him is fantastic when you have a tool which makes sense of data. But the underlying th thing there is you need those data points. right? If as an organization you are not at that scale, then you don't move your customer-facing stuff to Gen AI. You move your employee-facing stuff to Gen AI. Right? You invest in getting your employees up to skill on Gen AI, help them improve their productivity, while investing in parallel on building the data infrastructure you need to make use of all of these tools that are available to you. Excellent. I, I love Pankaj. He speaks consultants' language, use cases, <laughs> all of those things. So we really love you, Pankaj. Let me come with that to you, Ratanji. You know, consultants, tech vendors, everyone comes and speaks about, oh, this Gen AI will change the world and how this is the most fantastic thing that you should be doing. Uh, Central Bank has been pretty fantastic in the way you have approached and you have made the changes in the last few years. Uh, huge compliments to all of you. Uh, please share, how are you deploying Gen AI? What are your learnings in terms of many use cases that Pankaj mentioned or, or many of your partners would have mentioned? What is, what is really, uh, you know, kind of split the milk and water for us? Uh, very good morning to all of you. And uh, uh, see, uh, uh, for the moment, let's forget uh, as bank as a specific. Uh, in, a, in general, whether it is a public sector banks or a private sector banks, uh, it's, a, it's a disruption which is happening across the globe. And it's a disruption which is inevitable. And uh, as we proceed, uh, especially from the bank's point of view, we are uh, having a very complex situation. One is that uh, we are hinged with uh, a very, very legacy core technology systems which are there. And the second is, a uh, little weak uh, uh, data backbone we have. So, and uh, these two are, are very important things to get fixed uh, before we jump into Gen A, uh, into a very, uh, what you call a, an industry or a factory mode. So, uh, it's uh, now coming to this, it's uh, Gen A deployment is not merely a technology solutions. It's, impo it's important uh, we manage the change in culture we have to handle the processes, and then the deploy the technology capabilities, and then how do we garner benefits out of it? So, it's a it's a we are handling multiple uh, phases of disruption here in the organization as such, in terms of the culture and the change. Uh, so, uh, the imperatives are very simple. I mean, what is that? Which are the objectives? Of course, it is uh, higher profits by reducing the cost or operating efficiency, or it is uh, by giving a very uh, important or a very uh, distinctive omni-channel experience, uh, or uh, somewhere uh, re uh, reducing the innovation cycles. So I, these, these are the things. Wow, so much uh, you have said. Uh, a lot of you have gone back to your mobile phone, so I'll, I'll kind of push our question back to the audience. Radhanji said many interesting things. Gen AI is not only about tools and technology. He said a lot about processes, change management, people, right? So here is a question. What is most important when you think about Gen AI in your organization? Is it about technology? Is it about data? Is it about change management? So let's, again, show of hands. You can only pick one. Change management. A lot of hands. Data. Again, a lot of hands. Tools, technology. It's not like houses evenly split. OK, so maybe, maybe we need all three. Yes, Sanjayji. Uh, uh, 
sorry, I just of kind of uh, want to supplement what my colleague has told here. Uh, see, uh, what he has mentioned is a situation, but uh, there are use cases are there, uh, Pankajji. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the you have very rightly said, uh, these are some of the problems are there in the, in the setup, but uh, parallelly in Bank of Baroda, we have started it because our data consistency was far, far superior and we have invested heavily onto the data part of it. So we are able to take advantage of that and uh, we have uh, put in some of the use cases of Gen AI, uh, one specific being on the customer service part of it. To, to, to have a large network like ours and having an inconsistency of services across the, the places and the expectation of customers to have a uniform or a standardized or up to the mark service is something which was uh, we were grappling with. So as a result of that thing, we have used Gen AI for uh, having a standardization of the customer service uh, across our channels and all. So that's something which is, which is a, a thing which we have put in place. It's early days, but uh, the response as yet is, is quite good. Second area where we have uh, used uh, Gen AI in, in our setup is on the, uh, uh, the, the increasing the awareness or the knowledge level of our staff members across the product line. Because there are a host of products which we, we deal with. There are a lot of regulations or the uh, changes which is happening in the ecosystem. So to keep our uh, staff members up to date uh, with the thing, we have come out with a very kind of a uh, immersive experience in, in the learning new things or learning the things which is happening around them. So we have made that uh, thing uh, using a Gen AI. That is again something which has been uh, gaining some traction internally. Third area where we have uh, deployed it is on the fraud risk uh, management part of it. And that is again an area where uh, we have used it and, and uh, it, is, it is giving us, us uh, quite a significant uh, inputs. We are validating at this point in time because we, it is a, being a little sensitive area. We have uh, not kind of put it to a commercial use as yet, but we are doing some back testing with the existing data and, and the, the data available with us with these new technology and seeing it how it is uh, spanning it out too. So that's all from my side. No, thank you. Very interesting points, Ratanji. Yeah, I um, mean, uh, uh, yeah, as a bank, uh, central bank, uh, we have initiated uh, um, a couple of uh, initiatives in terms of uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have deployed this Gen A part in the conversational bots. Uh, we are also uh, deploying this uh, for uh, 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 visual, uh, virtual experts uh, for giving uh, financial advices. So we have also started using it in the collections uh, in uh, understanding the behavioral pattern of the, uh, uh, of the uh, what you call the payment history. So uh, as, we, uh, as we are uh, going through this journey, uh, obviously, of course, in the risk and uh, uh, security, cyber security also we have deployed uh, solutions. But uh, um, my view is that uh, these are all, of course, are great uh, start points uh, to initiate these journeys. Uh, there is a lot to move forward in this. These are all uh, in a disjoint manner, in a, which will prepare the organization for the future, obviously. Of course, uh, but uh, these are all uh, more of uh, enrichment which is happening across. Uh, but there is a lot to come. I mean, uh, if there are... Uh partner friends here who want to tie up with the banks, I think this can't be better music. We are hearing bankers speak about conversational bots uh, and a variety of things. So please, I mean, uh, they're speaking about collections, they're speaking about customer service. So please, if you have a solution which is building on Gen AI, AI please take it to the bankers. Pinagi, why don't you come in from, uh, from your vantage, how you say this? Yeah, see actually, uh, first of all, uh, this Gen AI is a landmark innovation. First of all, it actually it is a, not only a game changer, possibly it will uh, completely change our financial industry, data analytics, FDR. Okay, it is not only FDR. See, actually normal, whenever any, see earlier when I was in, I must be knowing that I was in Axis Bank earlier for a uh, long time and I joined recently in Bandhan Bank. So they are used to use a lot of AIMA, a lot of model used to use that, okay. I'd even give an example, uh, this, uh, we have also created on chatbot there, okay, in Axis Bank. For, not for, I'm not talking about the customer facing internal. Now, when after coming here, I see, I see that actually, just practically, I'll just talk about. When we'll talk about the, our uh, contract center uh, agents or maybe our help desk agent, when they talk to uh, customer and everything, they'll see that there are whenever something is asked, I'm the practical example I'm telling. 
then see that they will just try to find out different document, where it is available, everything, and it takes a lot of time, call time, everything. So immediately we have what we have done, immediately we just uh, that the model we have implemented there, and it has, we have seen significant improvement. And when my uh, boss was, was there in earlier in Axis Bank, he was not skeptical. He was saying that Axis Bank, when you have done that uh, internal chatbot, it was not giving that much performance. I told that it is completely, the technology has changed. Right. It is earlier AM, it is Gen AI. You see that difference. And he was amazed to see this. So this is the thing, this is one example I've given. Now everywhere you will see the difference. Yeah. Now if you see the fraud, just you was talking about the uh, digital fraud, fraud management thing actually. There if you see earlier the uh, lot of uh, thing whenever we just trying to identify, there are a lot of false positives to happen. Okay, now actually customer is doing the transaction. Maybe we have not seen the behavioral analytics and you see that based on the transaction pattern, we have seen that he should not do the transaction overseas. But here, after implementing this, we can find out the behavioral pattern, real time we can find out. And based on that, we can give better service to customer and the false positive also reduced. There are a lot more we can talk about, I think, then Fantastic. let us talk you about. Know, this is very good. Yeah. And I can see Dikshit Saab smiling that Jen AI can also help in improving fraud management. I can see your, your mind is already working. Pankaj, what, what a kind of question you have already given. Everyone is kind of jumping into it. I'll come to you a bit later. And after these two questions, I'll open for three or four questions from the audience. Question for you, Kiran. You know, as we heard our, our panelists, there are both internal and external use cases that we have heard, applications that we have heard. What's your take? Where, where should organizations start with? Should they start from internal policy, employee training, should start from customer service, or what, what has been your approach to it? So uh, uh, Ashish, from my perspective, uh, I'll try to answer it in a consultant's language since okay. you like that approach. Uh, and I'll use an example, and I'll also relate with Pankaj uh, in terms of the cognizant example mm -hmm. that he gave and, and the data of 17, 18,000 uh, uh, customers that they are able to see, right? So uh, in, in our organization, every third day, the value of GDP flows through our platform, right? Uh, that is a huge responsibility that we carry and also an opportunity. So in, in, our, uh, um, in our company, we are driving an example where, uh, or, or a pilot where we have taken five global banks, one of them from India, of the five, which is Access Bank. Uh, we are trying to study uh, the pattern of transactions that flow uh, on, on the platform and try to risk score real time, right? And, and this is, global data, applied intelligence to India, multiple other countries. So that's where we are responsibly trying to pilot and bring AI into India. In my opinion to your particular question, Ashish, uh, I, I would think there's no right answer uh, to this question today. I think it's an evolving space. Uh, uh, we have to work with employees to understand the, the dynamics of AI, educate them, but also provide tools to them uh, in, in evolving, evolving their journey. I think it's a, it's a joint responsibility between the organization and the employee uh, to evolve. So that's, that's how I would put it for you. No, and wonderful to see that you have this, as you said, the perspective is so macro, you know, the GDP flows onto your, onto your channels and onto your pipelines, that's, that's fantastic. But this is an interesting point. It's very difficult to say where to start. But Pankaj, you know, again, I'll come to you because you are a little bit outside the banking system, yet in the banking system. If you have to give one pointer to the audience, where should they start? How they should start? I would uh, go back to personal productivity of the leadership team, right? Okay. So if the leaders in the organization are using Gen AI, then it's easier for them to tell everybody else how to use Gen AI, right? If, uh, as as a CXO in the bank, if you don't have ChatGPT 4.0 on your browser or on your mobile, then your credibility when you talk to your team and say, hey, everybody should use Gen AI is much lower. Right? You should be able to engineer a prompt very quickly yourself. And it's, uh, it's a language model, right? It talks English. That's the beauty of it that you can talk to it in English and uh, it will respond back to you in English uh, or in other languages. And uh, that works seamlessly. So I would say 
engage with your leadership team and start with personal productivity. The other reason, and that's a topic we haven't yet touched on, is privacy and uh, data, right? So if you engage in personal productivity, you can still uh, keep away from impinging on your privacy-related issues, right? And it's also possible to have your own uh, Gen AI tools, right? You don't have to rely on public or free licenses. You can use sandbox tools which have learned on the internet, but they will be restricted to your organization. And those are the ones that you can use for personal productivity enhancement. And uh, start from there. And like some of the examples we heard here, it's fantastic to see that banks already have the capability to deploy Gen AI on the front, right? And that means they have the data to deploy machine learning at the back and then Gen AI at the front, without which, uh, I mean, both of them wouldn't work. So it's brilliant to see that, but it's a continuum, right? Not all banks will be there. So depending on where you are, you will adopt, but I would say start with personal productivity. Excellent. I mean, this is, you're almost quoted Mahatma Gandhi to say, be the change yourself, right? So that's, I hope everyone can download a chat for, for O and, and start uh, using it. I, I admit I'm also a little lagard. I, I have actually replaced Google searches on chat GPT, but maybe I, I'll also move a little bit forward on that one. As I turn to audience, let me just get one response from all of you. What is the numerical investment, return on investment you're looking from chat GPT or Gen AI in the next three years? Just one range. So if you have to ultimately, your board will ask, what is the return on the investment you are making? So please give me one number, just a range, and I'll turn to audience then. We'll start with you, Pankaj. So I would look at at least a 20 to 25 percent cost saving. 20, 20, 20. Uh, and I'm not a bank. I am a training and uh, content kind of organization. So, so one 20, of the key areas would be where okay. I save effort of about 20, 25 percent. Pinaki. Yeah, I think okay, it will be similar like this. But uh, this is what thing is even tangible. Okay. But there are intangible thing is huge. Okay. There are the customer experience and everything, the productivity and everything that is significant. That may not be able to calculate that. All thing. Right. The so 25 percent plus plus. Yeah. Okay. Ratanji. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's a very difficult question to answer and uh, articulate, actually. Uh, but I will say it will multifold. Uh, it, it, won't be, it won't be a numericals. It would be definitely multifold uh, the things. Uh, I think uh, more important, uh, I mean, I'll take the Pankas uh, question a little forward, saying that uh, uh, all of us uh, here, we are struggling a clear strategy for AI, actually. As an organization, uh, we, are, we are trying to do and emulate certain things, but uh, a strategy for AI with a clear objectives, uh, the, and the pointed question like, what is the ROA and what is the growth you are looking at? These are all very, very challenging. Okay, so as it's not an easy answer, but multifold is what we get, so we are, we are hoping. Yeah, uh, again, uh, it's too early to, to come to a number form at this stage, but uh, we do see a quite a, a bit of a, a improvement in the efficiency, the customer delivery, as well as uh, some kind of a, a internal uh, improvement in overall housekeeping and the fraud risk management. This is some area we are thinking. But uh, in case if it has to sustain and it has to become a, a long-term uh, uh, objective of the, the bank or it should be in the roadmap, it has to be 25% plus. There is no reason Excellent. it should be lesser than that. Kiran? Yeah, I, I personally, uh, I feel very irres irresponsible to put a number, but uh, for me, it's an efficiency gain, uh, and, and I would look at uh, AI as a vertical in the organization or machine learning as a vertical in the organization uh, that will um, improve the efficiency uh, on a co constant basis and, and keep us ahead of cyber risk and other pieces. So those are two areas that my, minds, uh, my mind runs into when I, when I look at Got it. Uh, this piece. So just just one, piece of mind. One, one thing I just want to add. See, the thing is that the potential is huge. Okay, now how much we can use, how much you can revalue, that depends on every organization, and that is the driving factor. It is just um, blindly not able to talk about that, but depends on the organization, how they can use this. Everywhere potential is there. So there's one thing which is common on this side of, the, of this dais, and this side of the dais is everyone is super gung-ho about Gen AI. I think all of you have mentioned with cautious optimism also have highlighted that it requires a lot of change management, data organization, everything. Let's see if there are some interesting questions from the audience. 
All right, I saw that hand go first at the back. So one minute, at the back. So if you can just uh, speak the question in a, in a succinct manner. Sorry, I don't know if I'm yeah, able to anyways. Yeah, yeah, okay. can hear you. Yeah, uh, I'm Rahul from Business Next. Uh, uh, specifically, Pinaki sir, I love the line you use, run the bank, grow the bank. Very interesting. And uh, uh, so when you speak about ROI, uh, uh, is our banks already seeing a positive ROI in Gen AI investments? Or what is a reasonable time duration you think for should be you know, as a payback period? You know, I'd like to understand. Well, I you. thought I, I asked that question for you. I think we heard uh, a 20, 25% return, but maybe no, a reasonable time. Uh, okay, time frame. So, Pinaki ji, what, what would be a reasonable time frame to get returns? See, actually, as I told that, how you leverage. Okay, that is the first point. Because how every company, how it leverage it, uh, potential is huge, immense. Okay, how fast we can leverage it depends on every organization. And their risk appetite, business strategy, that is depend on that. But the, the, if you ask me as a, uh, what should, can be done, can be done if we, Continue this pace, what we are right now it is going on. I think next one year or one half years, we will get significant improvement. That's, uh, that definitely will get the output. That every bank, every organization has started in the doing a lot of things as, as a uh, MVP kind of thing. And it will just we get the result by next year, possibly a lot of everybody will get the result. That is my right. guess. So one year minimum. Yes, sir. Uh, I am KK Gupta from Resurgent India. We are talking about the operational efficiency. Now, point is our credit to GDP are quite low when we are comparing with the developed countries, which are significantly high. How the IA can help for operational efficiency in the Indian economy for the increase in credit to GDP? Have uh, any view on that? Sir, I'm, uh, if you can just sharpen the question a little bit. I mean, this is this My is point too is broad. operational efficiency. Yeah. In so, Indian economy, because we are thinking about the five trillion economy uh, and uh, how we can achieve it because the credit to GDP are important so aspects in me, the Indian economy. Let me rephrase a question for any of you to take. How can the cost of delivering credit using Gen AI or AI come down? If you can answer that, I mean, of course, there's a larger point on how government can use, how laws can be, you know, how the documentation can become easier. But Let's speak from a banking perspective. Can we reduce the cost of credit delivery? Uh, uh, see, uh, um, uh, what I will uh, put it uh, is like this. It is not only the, the operational efficiency which will help us, uh, the, uh, the speed at which uh, we will be able to offer the services, and the standardization of the services which is being offered. So these are the three elements which will ensure that the TAT will come down, Second thing is the cost also over a period of time will come down. It's a new technology. It is still in the, the early days. So it's uh, difficult to say whether it will reduce the cost at this stage. But going forward, yes, it, it should uh, work on that line. So with that thing, definitely uh, I do see there will be a, a positive coming out of this uh, for the overall credit delivery as well. The major so, aspect is your efficiency. When we're talking about the assessment of any credit limits, we are asking so many data from the SME sector. Now the government has also come very clearly, you should not ask any data. You should collect from your own sources. Yeah. And uh, what I have to say in a recent budget, the uh, minister has told very clearly. Yeah, sir, I, I'll just keep the dialogue going forward. I think your point is absolutely right. I think data-driven, credit decisioning, and not relying on the just the old way of either collateralized or just paper-based submission, I think is starting, actually we are starting to see a lot of that happening in the market. One could argue why it is at lower level, why it can't move higher. But all these changes take time. So at least even from our perspective, I think some of those models are coming in. And I think you have really pointed to the bankers a very right direction. But I'll keep the dialogue moving, sir. You had a question. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ashish Kulkarni. Uh, I look after the banking at Tata Consultancy Services. Uh, some time ago, there was a study uh, published which said that for every uh, $1 return, uh, you have to invest about $15 to $17 in Gen AI. And that is the kind of uh, dichotomy in terms of investment that is required. Now, uh, these are obviously numbers are pertaining to uh, foreign markets and not India market. 
Uh, but do you foresee that you know these costs will come down and make it more affordable for us, or will it st stay in the realm of being too expensive? Again, I think the investment point, Ashish, has been broadly answered. Look, I mean, any new technology you are experimenting, I think the panelists have made that point. I think there is a little bit of a, right now, I would say a positive bias to invest. So unless there is anything specific to ask, uh, to add. I, I think there is, let's let the mood remain upbeat on Gen AI and investments. And I think that should help TCS. Final question before we come to the, before we move to some more topics. Yes, sir. I am Prem Chand from Punjab and Sindh Bank. Just close up. Uh, so, uh, Closer, sir. Yes. So we are aware of the importance of the Gen AI, and we know where it can help us in all our day-to-day -day operation and customer satisfaction and all these things. So uh, we can have the infrastructure, everything we can go for that, the compute and other things. But one challenge which we are getting right, getting the right talent and talent acquisition, the reskilling. So this part, there is one problem which we are facing. And another thing that every bank is doing, some bigger banks are doing, invested a lot of in there. They are doing some bank, the investment different level. But for other bank like uh, this RBI has uh, come up with the community cloud. So sim on the similar pattern can IBA, anyone from IBA can think of, can have an ecosystem where the all bank can participate and get this thing. So this was the question actually I wanted to ask you. I tried to get this question, get the answer of this question from Chat JPI itself, but I didn't <laughs> get a satisfaction. So that's, that's why I am asking here. So that's why these panels are very important. And actually IBA is doing a pretty good job on the cloud side, but I think you have raised some fantastic points and that takes us to the next section of our dialogue. Let's start with you, Ratanji. You're a public sector bank you have made some profound points on how you want to put together your Gen AI and future technology together. We know the constraints. Uh, please uh, tell us, how do you think about talent? How do you think about capabilities? And maybe after that, Sanjayji, if you can also add to that. Yeah, I think uh, my colleague uh, there has spoken uh, uh, the actual sentiment uh, uh, all of us are facing here. It's a, it's a, as an industry, uh, both from the banking as well as the technology, uh, the talent has become a uh, major issue. And uh, though we have an aspirations, uh, meeting a right tech partner, having those capabilities uh, and delivering those capabilities once they are partnered, is, is often, uh, 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 there, is a, there is a big amount of gap and lag, actually. So as an organization also, uh, some of the core capabilities, obviously, we, we have to build in within the bank. We cannot uh, uh, delegate or uh, look at partners. So uh, it's a mixed uh, uh, situation now. And uh, as an organization, we have started uh, so many initiatives uh, there is a big recruitment drive which is uh, happening, uh, obviously to get a lateral uh, recruitment for, uh, to s induct a, a lot of uh, new skills and resources uh, into the bank. And uh, apart from that, uh, we are also organizing a, a lot of reskilling uh, initiatives uh, to ensure that the existing resources, what we have, are reskilled to the latest technologies. Uh, I mean, these are the things which we are doing. So I think, you know, one thing I'll take from uh, Ratanji before I move to Sanjayji is I think having an inventory of what skills you possess as organizations itself is a very important starting point. Because I think it's just not a public sector issue. Even for private sector, if you were to hire talent from outside, it's uh, actually a nightmare. So, so I think that, thank you for raising the point. I think that talent part and how do you think about skills and how do you keep about thinking about reskilling, I think is a very profound point. Sanjay, do you want to add something? Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, in this uh, particular area, uh, we are in Bank of Baroda a little fortunate because we started on a, on a kind of a investment on this thing for last five years time. We have been doing a lot of work. We do have in-house talent as well, as well as uh, the other thing what my colleague has told, uh, looking into the, the areas on which we want to go ahead, uh, there is a lot of reskilling as well as the, the skilling to, to new set of people that is also happening. We are recruiting lot many new people as well in, in various uh, cadres laterally at, at a different uh, skill set. As well as uh, we are training our people, plus we do have in-house uh, capabilities as well. So the, all these three put together, 
uh, we do have a uh, problem, but a little lesser than, than yeah. others. Before I go to Pinaki and then to Pankaj, because you kind of operate in space, are you spending enough on training, rescaling, scaling, and how do you measure whether you're doing enough? Uh, uh, yes, that the second part is a little difficult to answer, ki whether that is adequate or not, but we are spending quite a sizable amount on the new technology and training of our people into the new technology. Plus, we do have some support from the, uh, the, the vendors or the service providers as well. So uh, all put together, I think is good. Fantastic. But uh, number, I, it will be a little difficult. OK. Penaki? Yeah. See, I think everybody has talked about that. But just two points I want to add. One is first of all that we need to create one COE kind of thing, center of excellence kind of thing, that we must have to create that for every organization, number one. And the partnership is very important because we don't have the capability. We initially, that learning and everything, what partners have, obviously that sort of capability, the in-house skill set staff might not have that then. That partnership when we work together and that also parallelly they will learn. Second point what I want to put that, See, whenever any, these are also innovation and everything, there will be failure and everything will happen. When you will start that journey, also the business and the seniors, they should encourage. There will be some failure, there will be some um, that uh, investment loss, something will happen. Because this is that the journey actually. We we'll instantly will not get the benefit. But that, the, uh, the patience, the caution should be there, that the, it will happen. That patience, if we do that, then they will also get encouraged. And that, gradually, that will happen. These two things I just want to add. Having faith is important, and having patience is important. I, I mean, there is no real bullet, silver bullet point. Create a center of excellence, invest in training. I think those are really the practical tips to move forward. It will take time, sir, to build any muscles. What do you think, Pankaj? Uh, I think this is a full toss for me to hit a six on, because okay. uh, <laughs> this is exactly where NIIT sits, right? We sit between Beijing. Are you from NIIT, sir? <laughs> We sit uh, in the space to bridge the talent gap between industry and uh, people, right? And uh, we also see ourselves as talent builders for the nation. So we are working with private banks, helping them acquire talent. And uh, I think it is a real problem, right? Every person I speak to, and I speak to a lot of CHROs across industry, not just banking. Uh, I speak to people in IT, in manufacturing, automotive, etc. cetera. Uh, this problem is consistent everywhere. But at the same time, only 20% of graduates who come out every year get a job, right? So there is a problem on both sides of the fence. And uh, definitely, as large organizations, I think it's incumbent upon us to also invest in training. Uh, so you will need to hire slightly raw and train them uh, to make them capable for working for you the way you would want them to. And of course, there are people like us who uh, are available for that, but that's a separate yeah. story. So Pankaj was so nice to me, so I'll be nice to him. What do you think should be the right money that organizations should set aside for training, rescaling? So uh, let me take a slight step back, right? So the analogy I will use there, uh, if you don't train, uh, it's like servicing your car. If you don't service your car, nothing goes wrong, right? Uh, tomorrow also, the car will work just as fine. Day after tomorrow also it will work fine. For a month it will work fine. After two, three months, you will have slight problems, right? And another six months later, fewer pro more problems and then it will be too late to service the car anymore. Then you'll have to replace. Training is kind of like that. If you don't train your people, nothing goes wrong in a few months' time. But further down the line, you will have very big problems. And therefore, uh, any money you invest in training is always worthwhile. Okay. Okay, so it's an open-ended stuff. Very good. Uh, Kiran, we heard a lot about talent, training, reskilling, but that will not be the only thing, right? The, the operating model, the organization structure, uh, the way conversations happen. So can you add anything beyond talent to really see organizations move into this new, new, new world? What, how should think, I mean, what are kind of internal initiatives you have to focus on as a CEO to really make sure things are moving? So, uh, so from a, uh, I'll probably comment on the talent part as well. Uh, you know, if you look at the AI machine learning conversations, they are recent. Uh, you know, you, you've not had them for a decade. It has started to evolve in the recent past. So there's no specific qualification that qualifies somebody to be a AI expert or, or something else. So, 
I, I think, uh, like most of the panelists said, uh, this has to more largely come from within with few experts from outside. And, and it has to be a journey of evolution. And the companies that are hungry, that are uh, deploying um, uh, uh, training mechanisms for their employees will succeed. Uh, and I agree with Pankaj in, in the servicing car example. I think that's a great example to, to look at uh, AI. So, so from our perspective, I, I think uh, we are a small organization, uh, about 2,500 uh, people across the globe. We've created a separate vertical, uh, you know, which is an uh, innovation vertical. There we have created sandboxes, and we are exposing our employees to be part uh, through various forums and learn from there. We are also encouraging our employees uh, to go out and do training programs uh, that could upskill them. Uh, so that's a constant endeavor, and I think that's what's going to drive it. I think it's not just about the organization, it's also about the employees. Uh, I think they also need to have equal hunger uh, to upskill themselves to be ready for the next challenge, right? Uh, in the past, you did not have many changes. In the last few years, changes are more constant, and, and learning has to become a journey, not a destination. So I think it's, uh, it's that yeah, philosophy no, I, that we look at. I think these are philosophical points, and I think you gave some good ideas around innovation and making sure every employee feels this is a part of his journey. We are kind of coming to an end, so I'll have a, f a second audience round coming up. If you have some interesting questions, please keep them up. But let's go back to where we started. You know, we spoke a lot about Gen AI, AI, investments, return on investments, talent and stuff. But at the end of it, it runs on technology backbone, right? So Sanjay do you want to speak about the resilience aspect in financial services? Do you want to speak about proactive remediation uh, approaches that Bank of Baroda kind of uses? Give a peek into how BOB thinks about resilience. It runs like a massive, massive network. Yeah, so uh, this is a very, very important point and very relevant in today's environment with so many things happening and customers' expectations going uh, off the roof. Uh, their expectation is plain and simple that it should be services should be available at all point in time from all modes, all, all channels, and, and this is where we are. And a little bit of a disruption creates a huge issue. And for a larger organization, the issues are more. Uh, so, but this is a global phenomena. This is a phenomena all of us are, are running through. So as far as resilience is concerned, there are two ways we are looking at it. First is uh, we have strengthened over a period of time our monitoring mechanism. That is the first step uh, to, to ensure that we are able to find it out if anything is going wrong before our customer comes to know. That's the first point we are doing it. Second point which we are uh, doing it is we are deploying a technology which makes our infrastructure almost uh, 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 available at all point in time by having redundancies, by having the, the availability on demand basis, and a lot of uh, parallel investment has happened on the technology so that our uh, uh, infrastructure is available at all point in time. And obviously, the on top of it, the applications which are running is, is good. That's second point. Third thing is the process part also. We have done a lot of work uh, to ensure that our processes are foolproof to ensure that these are some of the, the, the mechanics. What we are talking about is, is uh, looked into in totality. There are a, a very high level committee or teams are there who works on this. There is a 24 by 7 monitoring on the entire uh, setup is there as far as the availability is concerned. Plus, we do e use a lot of intelligent tools to, to come uh, in terms of the, the whole thing. So this is in nutshell what I could have talked about. Thank you. Ratanji, you want to add to this uh, overall view on you know, how you are thinking about resilience at Central yeah, Bank? I mean, uh, this has become more uh, 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 contemporary because the scale and volume of uh, operations which is going through, and uh, uh, this is a humongous effort from the bank side to be uh, available uh, around the clock. So uh, uh, we, we are uh, scaling up. Uh, apart from that, I think uh, there are a lot of technology tools which we are using, like uh, application uh, performance monitoring tools. Uh, these are all uh, uh, very new edge tools, uh, cutting edge tools, which we are deploying at application to understand the lag and latency with which the services are getting uh, uh, served and the performance of various uh, uh, infrastructure, I mean, uh, the infrastructure. So uh, this is an ongoing process. A huge investments is going on specifically in terms of uh, monitoring the performance and scalability and volumes of this traffic which is going through. 
So that's how we are handling the resiliency. And more importantly, the processor also, we have, uh, we have redesigned ourselves. We have gone to the uh, Blackboard again to, uh, to see and create uh, simulated situations and see how we respond to those situations. Yeah. I think this is again interesting. We speak about technology and resilience, but actually it's also a lot about processes, interacting with the business, understanding what the needs are. Pinaki, my final question uh, for you is, uh, Ratanji spoke about infrastructure. Cloud, and we heard the audience also speak about cloud. Um, I think is, uh, many of the applications can only be run on cloud given the kind of needs they have. I think we have been making progress. IB itself has been doing a fantastic job bringing all bankers together. Tell us, from your perspective, uh, where you see real value in cloud, where you see you will want to make more definitive moves on cloud, your philosophy for cloud. Yeah. So first of all, actually the, uh, the cloud journey, okay, even if we start that, first of all, we have to discuss with the management, we have to take their buy-in, we have to convince them, as well as the IT other stakeholder. Because the application owners, if they don't get convinced, that cloud will give them benefit, they will not be interested on that. That's the first and foremost thing. Gradually, that is the important thing, then start them. Otherwise, if we just jump on that, it will be definitely failure. That is the first point. Secondly, there is, see now the phenomenal advancements happening in the cloud. Okay, the, there are lot other concern was earlier there, the security. Okay, security, whether it will be secured, that will be done. Now, this thing, thing is that there is actually Security, the investment, whatever is happening, every cloud provided is phenomenal. Okay, every sort of security process are there. Just the door is there, lock is there. If you would open it, it is your problem. You need to ensure that you have put the proper lock. Correct. That is the first and foremost thing. It is our responsibility. Okay, number one. Secondly, actually, that the lot of time, what we did mistake. Actually, the, we just try to see jump in on that and just uh, put this uh, application there without making any changes. Rehosting, it is not the solution. It needs to be refactoring, re-architect as per the cloud. If you don't do that, that is another failure will happen. So that is, these are the steps you need to do. Otherwise, what will happen? Even if it goes to this cloud, cost will increase. <laughs> there are cost, another point, there are a lot of cost-wise, cost that also that uh, improvement can be done. First of all, that, uh, this is another concern actually people are talking about. If we do that cost, uh, it, will be cost it will not be cost-effective, cost will increase. But there are different ways, okay. You can put reserve instant, savings plan, lot of thing you can consider based on that as the cost can also only reduce, okay. And continuous the that cost, whatever it is incurring, that also you need to publish to everywhere. And then based on that, the, or one team you have to create, where they will reduce the cost. Okay, then, then another concern also is the vendor locking. Okay, that if you see, if you use that, uh, the Terraform and different tools are also there, multi-cloud approach you can do. Based on that, that also can be reduced. So there are different ways. First, if you initially state the step what you should prove, that first the business buying and management buying, then accordingly the proper strategy you have to form, what way, how, what we will take it up there, how we will do the reskilling and everything. Okay, based on that, you have to start. If you do properly, obviously cloud will be beneficial significantly. The kind of investment, the cloud native, app, app, uh, the technology, what you are getting, you will not get it in the on-premise. On it is absolutely not possible. That we have to, like I'll just give on Genia thing. Genia if you use, then what, where will do that? You have to use this cloud service and everything. Otherwise, it will not be able to utilize that. So there are a lot, everywhere, cloud is giving huge, it is actually must now, right now. Every organization must, only thing, but to learn from our old mistake and take it forward accordingly. Excellent. I think, uh, I think there is no way out of cloud, but there is no, easy lunch, you have to do a bunch of things right from management uh, alignment all the way to re-architecting a bunch of things to be able to make use of the cloud. We are running out of time, so let's see if there is one smart question there, sir. Uh, thank you, Ashish, for a wonderful uh, interactive session on this. Uh, so as far as the adoption of Gen AI tools, as far as banking industry is concerned, what would be the right approach? Whether we should skill the uh, inside resources, upskilling, and having spend on that part. Uh, so, slight, as the members were telling, 
the banking community was telling it is slightly difficult to convince the, the board to have the, in terms of return on investment, whether that would be the right approach or should we rely completely on a fintech partner who will be more agile for all these kind of technologies and there will be a measured outflow and we can actually ask for the return on investment from their side. I think that'll be useful. I think this is a very heartfelt question. How do I start? How do I convince my board? Yeah, so, uh, so if I answer that, uh, it has to be a mix of both. Because if you start skilling people, it is going to take a longer time and uh, the capability development will take time. Uh, getting a person or uh, getting a fintech partner may be an initial uh, process by which we can go to market quickly. But over a period of time, uh, we will have to develop an in-house capability as well. So it will have to be a mix of both. That's my take on this. Also, I think reference visits will be very helpful. Yeah. You know, rather than depend on what a fintech or a tech partner is speaking, you know, request, let's say, Bank of Baroda or Central Bank or Bandhan Bank to say, can we have a look? I think seeing is believing. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a slow process, so it takes time. I, we are, yes, sir, of course, Pinakish. Just two, two points. I think that you can, in, in my example, uh, my, my experience I just talked about, there are different ways. First, you have to do a prototype. You have to show that outcome. And to a uh, small scale, you do that thing. There are, in, even if you don't use LLM, there is a SML also there. Small, that is also the SLM that also you can release. Okay. Through that, you can create some prototype and show to the management what is the advantage. And if you do that, gradually they will get uh, the buying and you can get the buying and everything you can parallel to. But uh, at the point what we are saying, upskilling and everything parallel needs to be done, but partnership is important. Once you do the partnership initially and create a COE, then only the success will happen. But it's prototype, partnership, and upskilling. But all three parallel help too. So I'll end with a rapid fire, and you have just one choice to pick up. If there are only five choices given to you, core, up to you, to core and legacy modernization, talent, scaling up and getting value from investments, cloud, Gen AI. If you have to slightly dial up your investments on any one of this, what would you pick? Talent, okay, people and talent. Uh, Sanjay ji. Um, uh, same because all rest of the things do have a, a dependency on that. Talent and people, okay. It's, a, it's purely talent. Yes. It's purely talent, wow, okay. <laughs> talent, <laughs> talent is number one, talent but I just one. want to add Obviously, JNEI parallel, only Genia. not only talent, parallel also have to do that. Otherwise, music to your ears, Pankaj. What do you say? <laughs> I was just going to say, naam note karlo sab ke. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, panelists. This was wonderful talking to you. And thank you, audience, for this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you all for the engaging and insightful discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take five minutes to reset the dice for the next session before lunch. <laughs>